charge. He was honored by the uh, Stuart Weber Foundation just a very short time ago. Uh, but it really is a privilege to have uh, Chris come up. I know his talk will be interesting and intriguing, as he always is. Congratulations. Thanks very much, Brian. You have a plaque and a check. Hey, what do you know? You're in good shape. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. Members of the uh, ASLMS, it's a great privilege today to receive the Leon uh, Goldman Award. I never met uh, Dr. Goldman, but I'm absolutely aware of his incredible influence on laser surgery and on this society. In fact, I've just come back from the Noah Worcester meeting in Las Vegas uh, where we discussed uh, hi him and his work. Um, he was a founding member of that organization, and um, so it's a true privilege. Uh, I'm actually, uh, the, the first title that I came up with, you know what it's like when people, you know, they, they call up and say, um, you know, we're going to honor you, um, and you say, thank you very much, and the next question is, they say, so we want a title, uh, six months before the event. Uh, and so I came up with this uh, title of Searching for a Common Truth, which I thought it was a catch-all, but then when I started thinking about what I was going to say a few weeks ago, uh, um, I changed it to, to, to healthcare regulations, the FDA, and quackery, which I think is a bit unfortunate, since quackery, of course, does rhyme with Zachary. <laughs> so I'm not going to say much about quackery, but, but and you might think, well, where do they all fit in together? Uh, with regard to disclosures, I have none with regard to this particular presentation, except that I am uh, biased. I will, however, use the uh, traditional um, ASLMS uh, um, uh, disclosure forms, which have absolutely nothing to do with my presentations. Um, about two or three weeks ago, I sent out an email to some of my colleagues here listed, and I, and I asked th this panel, this esteemed panel, um, for, for how they might, if they were given a magic wand, fix the health care uh, problems. And uh, most got back to me, some didn't. Um, and you'll see these names up here. Uh, um, uh, R Richard, I, I hope I don't give you too hard a time today. Uh, um, uh, you, I, I love you, man, and just remember that, even if I give you a, a hard time. Uh, I'm going to be addressing today the cost-benefit ratio of federal health care regulations. I should be discussing the FDA. Is the FDA, FDA necessary? And if it is, how would you reform it? And finally, I'll be asking you to look in the mirror and to try to recognize and avoid uh, quackery. Well, uh, who's taking it in the shorts right now? Most of us, actually, uh, given the economic uh, problems. Wall Street, for sure. Housing, yep. The auto industry, Detroit, unfortunately, is going down the toilet. Uh, well, for those of you who think that this is not going to affect health care, think again. Over the next five to ten years, there are going to be dramatic changes in health care, whether you like it or not. So. I think we all need to understand the problems, which is difficult, and we all need to get involved. And I must say, from my own point of view, I have not been involved at all, because health policy is not something that I'm familiar with, particularly, as will become apparent probably during this lecture. Uh, I will just mention that Lawrence Brown, a few years ago, said paradoxically, health care has become steadily more regulated at all levels of government and in the private sector too, at the same time as other economic sectors, such as tr transportation, telecommunications, and banking have moved the opposite way. Well, we've seen what deregulation in banking, what the effect has been in that regard. And I don't want you to think that I am being a reactionary or a revolutionary here, because I'm not. But I want to raise some of the issues. And in this auditorium today, there will be people who will have every single uh, um, aspect of uh, concept with regard to the sort of reforms that I'm going to be talking about. Great health care could be provided in the United States at much lower costs. Who agrees with that statement? Okay, I'm saying about 50% of you are agreeing with that. Among the world's 30 most industrialized countries, United States, Mexico, and, Tur uh, and Turkey do not have universal health coverage. Frankly, it's a disgrace. 
Somewhere between 40 and 60 million Americans are without health insurance. And these people without insurance, they tend to avoid care because it's too costly, or when they really need it, they get saddled with the highest costs because of cost-shifting uh, events that uh, are so uh, prevalent, particularly in our hospitals. So <clears throat> the cost of health care is increasing in large part from my point of view, because of health care regulations. And who's paying? Well, businesses are paying. We physicians are paying. And I would ask you, for every patient that you see, how much time is spent on clinical care and how much of your time is spent on administrative paperwork? It's a factor of two to one or three to one or something like that, or somebody's doing it. And this has to change. It's an outrage. The cost of health care regulation takes into account regulation of health care facilities, professionals, health insurance, drugs, medical devices, medical tort, and the cost of defensive medicine. Now, it's extremely difficult to actually get specific figures on the costs, but you have to work out the costs uh, of uh, the health care, and then you've got to wor work out the benefits, all right? The total cost of health care probably exceeds something like $340 billion. However, there are benefits of health services regulation that probably exceed around $150 billion. Thus, the net burden, the net burden of health services regulation is about $170 billion annually. This actually exceeds the annual consumer expenditure on gasoline and oil in the United States. Of the 50 to 60 millions uh, of Americans lacking health insurance, it is estimated that about 7 million might be attributed to excess regulatory costs. It's also estimated that 18,000 Americans die every year because they have lack of health insurance coverage. At the same time, something like 22,000 die each year because of reduced societal income related to health service regulations. In other words, if you put that $170 billion into preventative care, it would have a dramatic effect on the health of the lives of Americans. We need to look at a broad range of um, ways to reduce and or eliminate the excessive costs. Um, and with, that might be the gamut from quality-oriented uh, health care facilities and also access-oriented, uh, things like uh, mandated health benefits, etc. We've got to look at the FDA, and we need to look at medical tort, as I've mentioned. So what are the ways of finding to reduce or eliminate the costs? I believe that we need to maintain a stripped-down but very simplified set of core regulations that have good evidence of benefit. We should consider scrapping all regulations that have a negative cost-benefit ratio and these have been worked out. There are some that have a positive benefit, and there are others that have a negative benefit. We should consider scrapping all regulations, of which there are thousands, uh, where there is no evidence-based rationale. Further, emphasis cannot simply be put on reducing costs, but needs to be based on some factual evidence and on the improved quality of health care.